The first decade of the 20th century was the era of the Disney Channel tween star. It was then that the world was introduced to the likes of Zac Efron, Vanessa Hudgens, Miley Cyrus, Selena Gomez, Demi Lovato, Nick Jonas, and Joe Jonas. They were huge back then, and they're still huge today. Five of these stars were still seen regularly on the network at the start of this decade, but they were all gone by the end of 2013. Disney Channel would continue to air music-oriented programming, hence introducing its audience to a new crop of tween stars. And while Shake It Up and Teen Beach Movie proved to be very popular with the channel's audience, they couldn't quite reach the explosive success of Hannah Montana and High School Musical. Believe it or not, Disney Channel didn't always ride on the success of tween stars. In the 80s and 90s, the channel mainly targeted family audiences. It wouldn't be until the onset of Lizzie Mania that Disney would completely shift their focus to the tween demographic, therefore leaving families by the wayside. But in 2010, family programming would make a come back in a big way. Good Luck Charlie debuted as Disney Channel's first original sitcom targeted at family audiences. Good Luck Charlie would be Disney Channel's answer to the traditional family sitcom. There was the cute baby, brother and sister, mom and dad, the whole enchilada. And this time around, the family wouldn't include wizards, pop stars, or psychic powers. Show creator Phil Baker explained, Our hope is Disney Channel gets the idea in the ears of parents that here's a show you can sit down and watch with your kids. Baker's idea for Good Luck Charlie Charlie stemmed from his experience watching tween-targeted sitcoms with his nine-year-old daughter and noticing that there was little in those programs that appealed to parents. Dog with a Blog would be Disney Channel's next shot at the family sitcom formula. You heard that right. It's about a dog that runs an online blog. And he talks. What is the deal with dog biscuits? They're not made out of dogs and they're not biscuits. <laughs> this one was a lot sillier. And while it kept the heartwarming family messages intact, the talking dog on a computer made it a harder sell for older audiences. The family sitcom trend would continue well throughout the decade, with shows like Girl Meets World and Stuck in the Middle. Both of these sitcoms have an important place in Disney Channel history, but more on that later. In 2012, Disney Channel finally ended Nickelodeon's 17-year run as the highest rated cable channel in the United States. That year, they held the number one TV series, number one animated TV series, and number one TV movie. Disney Channel had come a long way in its 30 years of of being on the air. A network that was formerly a premium service with a very limited audience now had the highest rank in children's television. Along with this rank came the opportunity to positively influence children. And Disney knew this. In June of that year, the Walt Disney Company announced that it would stop advertising food and beverage products that did not meet strict nutritional guidelines on Disney Channel, becoming the first media company to take such a stance on stopping the marketing of junk food products to kids. Then First Lady Michelle Obama applauded Disney's approach. When it comes to the ads they show and the food they sell, they're asking themselves one simple question. Is this good for our kids? Uh, and make no mistake about it, this is huge. The year 2012 would also mark the beginning of a new era in Disney Channel cartoons. In 2007, most of the channel's cartoons were moved to graveyard slots so the network could heavily focus on their tween-oriented sitcoms. Phineas and Ferb was the exception. They remained extremely popular for the show's eight-year run. In 2012, Disney Television Animation created an entirely new, diversified slate of programming for the Disney Channel and their sister channel, Disney XD. This would bring upon what many referred to as as a new Disney cartoon renaissance. Mickey Mouse shorts would be played during the channel's commercial breaks, and shows like Gravity Falls, Star vs. the Forces of Evil, and Wander Over Yonder gained critical acclaim and legions of fans. Although most of these shows have now come to an end, plenty of cartoons continue to take up the channel's daytime slots. These include Tangled, the series, Big Hero 6, the series, Milo Murphy's Law, and DuckTales. That's right, they brought back everyone's favorite 80s cartoon. Parents who grew up on the show can now relive their childhood when they watch Disney Channel with their kids. And this brings me to Disney Channel's latest trend, mining the past for new hits. It all began in 2014 with the television premiere of Girl Meets World. The show served as a follow-up to ABC's 90s sitcom, Boy Meets World. This time around, the show centers around the life of teenage Riley, Corey and Topanga's daughter. Feel old yet? Well, the nostalgia train continued with 2015's Descendants, the first decom to be built around characters from Disney animated films. Then there was 2016's Adventures in Babysitting, the first decom to be a remake. 
And if Girl Meets World made you feel old, well, you ain't seen nothing yet. Raven's Home, a spinoff of That's a Raven, brings Raven and Chelsea back into the lives of fans. But this time around, they're moms with kids in middle school. Not to mention that Kim Possible has returned in a live action reboot, and there's a new Bug Juice show. Anyone else remember the 90s show Bug Juice? Comment down below if you do. Okay, so Disney Channel isn't completely stuck in the past. Over the past few years, the channel has made amazing strides in representation. Take 2016 Stuck in the Middle, the first Disney Channel series series to center around a Hispanic family. That same year, Disney premiered the animated series Elena of Avalor, which featured the first Latina Disney princess. And by 2017, there were two shows that centered around African American families and two shows that starred Asian American leads. There's also been a notable increase in LGBT representation. In 2014, Good Luck Charlie would be the first Disney Channel show to feature a gay couple. Taylor has two moms. <laughs> Nothing gets past you, Bob. In 2017, Star vs. the Forces of Evil would feature a same-sex kiss, and earlier this year, a character from Andy Mack uttered the words, I'm gay, marking a first in the network's history. I feel weird. Different. Cyrus. You've always been weird. But you're no different. LGBT advocates have praised the Disney Channel for its decision to weave a gay story arc into its series. The Disney Channel of today is unrecognizable to those who watched it three decades ago. What started as a premium network with a handful of puppet shows and old movies is today a force to be reckoned with. It's the number one network in children's television, but it didn't get there overnight. If you've seen the other videos in the series, you know that Disney Channel was continually experimenting and rebranding itself. Some of its choices worked, and others just didn't. But once the channel hit its stride, it took over the world. Disney Channel set the bar for children's television. They were the first kids network to win over the tween demographic, build a pop empire, and tackle same-sex love. Today, Disney Channel is doing what a lot of mature channels are not. They're showing the realities of a changing society and introducing children to what the world is becoming. And that concludes my history of Disney Channel series. Whew, that took a while, but it was so worth it. It was such a wonderful trip down memory lane for me, and I hope it was for y'all as well. What do you think was the best decade for Disney Channel? Let me know in the comments section below. For me, it was definitely the 2000s, which makes a lot of sense because that's when Disney Channel started shifting their focus to the tween demographic, and I was a tween for a good part of that decade. So I might be a little biased. Anyways, I can't thank y'all enough for sticking with me through this series. I'll be on vacation next week, so I'll be taking a week off from doing videos, but stay tuned because there'll be plenty of more Disney history to come. And if you're not subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. All right, y'all have a magical day and I'll see you again in two weeks.